In my family, there are four ladies. My mom, my two sisters, me, and oh, of course, there's also my dad. So as you can imagine, it's quite a spectacle when the whole family is going out for the night. 30 minutes before leaving, dad would start glancing at his watch, demanding, what? You haven't picked out your outfit yet? Are you kidding me? But five minutes left, he is screaming. How in the world aren't you done after two hours of getting dressed? All the ladies in the room should know the answer. It's no crime that people care about appearances, boys and girls alike. Just look at all the selfies on Instagram. It takes 20 minutes to get one picture right. But because we see this dramatization as normal, we ignored how it could be sinking sand. And at one point, have the potential to drive a girl to hold up a knife or to the edge of a roof, the middle of the road. Love makes you blind. We all know that even the smartest person becomes a blockhead when they're in a relationship. Anorexia nervosa, an eating disorder where the patient has a distorted perception of their body and an intense paranoia for weight gain, is an abusive boyfriend. He hurts you, but you're simply addicted to him for some unexplainable reason. So to dump this boyfriend, we are going to first uncover the harm he has done. Second, identify his partners in crime. And finally, slam the door in his face as we forever say goodbye. The National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Associated Disorders shared that approximately 30 million Americans today live with an eating disorder, and 90% are females. This illness is prevalent and it is deadly. In fact, it has the highest mortality rate of any psychiatric disease, and teen girls are especially vulnerable to it. Because as they enter a stage of figuring out their identities, anything could kindle up their self-contempt. A CDC statement from last June said that the early month of 2021 saw an increase by roughly 50% of adolescent girls' visits to the ER due to suicide attempts. So let me contextualize this for you. After over-dieting for five years, an ordinary 20-year-old, Izzy Harris, a student in the UK, she looked in the mirror and saw that the girl in the mirror had blue fingernails and not because she had bad fashion taste or anything, but she also had bones that stuck out to reveal a skeleton. The girl in the mirror had empty patches on her scalp where hair had fallen out and teeth that had rotted away and gray skin. Yet even at that point, she thought she needed no help. So let's imagine Izzy Harris over here. The United States we live in today would go, wow, you look pretty good. Am I mistaken? We are a face-looking society. We worship slim people and spurn the other group, including a decent amount of normal weight girls deceived into thinking that they are fat. In an idealization of thinness, 99% of models have extremely skinny legs, not to mention the highly edited selfies and fitspiration images monopolizing social media. In September of last year, Facebook whistleblower Frances Hagen revealed a series of bombshell leaks. According to a Wall Street Journal report, 33% of girls they surveyed felt that Instagram aggravated their dislike for their bodies. Facebook, the owner of Instagram, had long made similar discoveries, but chose to withhold all of their information from the public. 
But as we all know, comparison is the thief of joy. For many with a low self-esteem, they look up to those in the images and they see perfection. So the next step, they strive towards cloning that supermodel body figure by depriving themselves of nutrients they need. Food might be sustenance, but to them, it is also fattening. Right now, the influence of social media has created similar body image issues for girls and boys as well, which in that case, abusive girlfriends, I guess? But enough jokes, because anorexia nervosa, it is too real. And it transforms someone into a total stranger. In the past two years, my own twin sister tried to end her life twice because of this eating disorder. The two of us are very close. My parents, they even joke sometimes that I'm her boyfriend. Not the abusive kind, I hope. But it wasn't hard to notice when she started eating no more than a bite every meal and exercising two hours a day. That was the first time she told me how much she hated her body. She said that she wanted to cry every time she looked at herself. And every night, she would spend an hour pinching her legs before going to sleep. Anorexia nervosa had my sister in the palm of his hand. She searched up literally every food's calorie and narrowed her entire diet down to fruit and vegetables. Obviously, this kind of eating habit led to her losing a significant amount of weight. But even now, she sees no difference in the mirror. German-born American psychiatrist Hilde Birch explained that individuals with anorexia nervosa often function with a false self, meaning that they cannot discriminate between their own and their caretaker's expectations and needs, which in lay terms means that they don't know what they want, what they need, or what's good for them. But despite all the frustrations I might have towards my sister's condition, I did not come here today to grumble. Anorexia hurt my darling sister, so it is my enemy. I came here today to fight it, even if it's only with my words, and to help other people to fight it. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt once said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So it is time to throw other people's opinion out the window because when you accept them, you are giving permission for people to condemn you. And in that case, I'm sorry to tell you that you're as guilty as your critics. But there is a simple way out, and that is to love yourself. Adopt Psalms 139 as your mantra. I am fearfully and wonderfully made which is an idea universal in other religions as well. Also recognize that redeveloping self-love is like seeking a new path through a forest because the original one you were on had a dead end. But you're bound to be injured by tearing through all that leaves and branches in your way. But in the end, it will be worth it because your scars are nothing compared to still being stuck in that forest. But how, you ask? Well, shift your self-talk. The earliest psychological research on self-talk often cited Aaron Beck's cognitive therapy, describing it as a mechanism for one to access their faulty rationale that influences their behaviors. Track legend Carl Lewis once shared his mental struggles. Before a big race, he would tell himself, get out of the blocks, run your race. If you run your race, you'll win. Channel your energy, focus. 
he ended up winning nine gold Olympic medals and one silver. So obviously it worked for him, but in the context of one's self-image, tell yourself that you are beautiful. Say it as many times as it takes until your brain gets sick and tired of it, but accept it as truth. This abusive boyfriend or girlfriend that we're fighting is persistent. But he knows only one trick. Pull one lever and you break the control he has over you. I'm happy to say that after battling anorexia for two years now, my sister is recovering steadily. And I have faith that it won't be long before the old her is back. Everything I said today was for her. And girls and boys who presently or might suffer from this eating disorder in the future. Remember, love yourselves because you are worthy to be loved. Thank you.